All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Yes. <laughs> Greetings, humanists. Yes. What, what I have done as a science educator is failed. Uh, this is um, uh, Mars. I don't think, I don't think Mars is a planet, to tell you the truth. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. Uh, I am a result of colleges, and when you're in my position here in the front of the room, you look at most people are not looking at me. They're looking at my mother, uh, shown here. My mother uh, was recruited by um, a rocket thing going to the planet Jupiter. And so I say to creationists, of all ages, what is it? What is it that you find so compelling? What is it that makes you so into this? And all I can think, everybody, is we, or I, as a science educator, have failed. And I'm over there just so excited about it. Look, my hands are moving. Look at me. I'm just thrilled. And they're just looking at me like, it, it just breaks my heart. And this really was an enormous turning point for me. And I, I had this moment as a kid, and I spent a long time watching bees. I mean, I got to the point where I was pretty sure I was watching the same individual, the same girl bee coming and going from the azalea bushes. And I realized I am from some other, well, go planet, yeah, some other place. And then, maybe you've heard about this. I, Many years ago, I was at uh, McLennan Community College, which is in, uh, it's real near Crawford, Texas. It's in Waco. It's in Waco, Texas. And I pointed out that, you know, they let boys in. You know, it's gone to heck. But we got to work. This is, I, I say all the time, we got to work on the young people. Now, whoever had written the first part of Genesis, at least as it's translated in English, was probably not aware, bees fly fine. <laughs> and this fundamental science idea was lost on these people. <laughs> Whatever was before the egg had to not quite be a chicken, had to be some proto-chicken, some pre-chicken, and a pre-rooster. I know many of you have day jobs, but I just pointed out where the rocks are. <laughs> Don't want to be get too weird on you, but. See, we are all time travelers from the Bible uh, electronically. Uh, and so uh, uh, it's very popular to say, well, this represents monotheism, and then we're all in this together. So uh, then another thing I got involved in a couple years ago, I delivered the Washington Post. I was a paper boy, back, uh, a paper deliverer. Because when you put a note in a bottle and throw it in the ocean, Everybody who's radioactive has this bubbly background because the Enigma code in World War II, nobody, nobody could figure it out. It's just hilarious. It's great. But with your brain, you can imagine all of that. I'm not trying to be a jerk. The stuff that you and I are made of, things that we breathe like oxygen and carbon and sulfur and phosphorus and iron and all those other wonderful even-numbered elements, why do you think they make that up? Because that's what they see, for crying out loud. There's a very compelling study that four years old, uh, 10 years old, fourth grade, is about as old as you can be to defy the laws of aerodynamics. And I was a little kid, unable to fly. I, fa I failed. The difference between somebody who's 10 years old and a grown-up is really not much more than a grown-up's experience. And so this idea that what we observe is why we have these things people call theories is just this crazy, this astonishing fragility. But appreciate that when it comes to the universe, it's almost all just me sitting in a chair. And that fundamental idea just is amazing to me. Why are you looking for life on Mars? I mean, what would you do if you found it? <laughs> and so uh, uh, this sticks with you the rest of your life. So. The idea of the Big Bang is so extraordinary that it couldn't possibly be true. Big Bang theory 
You must be kidding me, God. No matter what, what God you're into, uh, it's all the same. We should all join in this and celebrate our oneness with the binary number of resonances to the pulsars. I mean, how hard could it be? <laughs> Allah bless America. It's stunning. It's overwhelming. It's wonderful. I, could say, I know in this room it's being recorded, I could easily say something could end my career. But I, I, you know, I'd gotten up at 5.30 in the morning New York time, which was 2.30 Pacific time. And so uh, I won't say I was taken off guard, but uh, I just said what I thought. Uh, that if you're a grown-up and you want to go off and believe this, that's the whole thing. So if you could somehow get an extraordinary car on some extraordinary road and drive straight up, you'd be in outer space in barely an hour of freeway, hour and a half of freeway driving. You'd be, well, in California, you'd be 20 minutes of freeway driving. <laughs> uh, you'd be in outer space. And this is the thing that has affected me my whole life. But I got to tell you all, I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, but it's a good time for me and my colleagues to go to get a hot dog. Thank you all very much. Thank you. So, oh gosh, I love you. Yes. Oh, cool. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Uh, wow, thank you guys.